So many shows came out in the last year that prove what America needs is wholesome, family-oriented, and faith-based entertainment. The swift cancellation of those same shows proves that in America, we don't know what we need. Today we're taking a look at 2018's worst television shows, meaning the ones that were cancelled after just one season. Are you ready for my unsolicited television opinion? Prepare to get inside my brain for 2018's television flops. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick, thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel. Can you tell that I'm a little glowy and red in the face? It's because of sun damage. I was in Palm Springs this past weekend with my boyfriend, we just sat in the pool and relaxed and it was amazing. So imagine my shock and surprise when I found this list on the LATimes.com listing all of the shows that were cancelled so far in 2018. There were several items on this list that I remember seeing the billboard on Sunset Boulevard driving to work and thinking, hmm, how are they gonna make that work? Before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps support this channel by letting me know that you want to see more videos just like this. And if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload at least two every week. The first show that caught my attention on this list was from CBS. It's called Living Biblically. It's been getting pretty poor reviews from the get-go. Jonathan Galecki is the executive producer. He's on The Big Bang Theory. I think the best way to get a feel for this show is to just watch this behind the scenes featurette. Do you have any books for when you're just sort of an overall disaster as a person but are also going to be bringing a human child into the world? Or Bible. The story is loosely based on a book by an author named A.J. Jacobs, who wrote a New York Times bestseller called The Year of Living Biblically. Decided to live my life 100% by the Bible, to the letter. So there you go. The main character is a writer who decides to live his life by the Bible because he's having a baby, I guess. Now, I get that this is based on the life of a real person who actually did this. It doesn't seem like the best way to do this story justice is through a multi-camera sitcom on CBS. I mean, maybe this is CBS trying to relate more to those audiences that enjoy faith-based programming. Leviticus says, do not wear clothing woven from two different kinds of thread. Donuts in the hazy! <laughs> Oh my god, donuts? Chip's discovery throughout this whole show is what does he take literally in 2017? What should he maybe lean more on the figurative side? It's gonna be a wild ride. Is it going to be a wild ride? I have a question about that. Hey, Chip, hooked up with this chick, Josie from CrossFit, last night. Hottest caboose I have ever seen. <laughs> Aside from my wife, of course. I don't know where he works, at the world's worst place where people would just openly talk about their affairs like this, but more so, I'm concerned that anybody would show up to an office building with hair in that particular shape. Why does it look like a little a lace hat that he would put right here? I, on the other hand, haven't washed my hair in three days and has never looked better, so suck on that network television. I think we're gonna do very well in Vatican City. I consider Chip Catholic in the same way I consider the Olive Garden Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! Groundbreaking comedy. I'm sure that the cast and crew worked very hard on this show, and I see how this could have been adapted into a TV show, right? The premise can be theoretically carried on for many seasons. What I think the issue here was that CBS was trying to both cater to a faith-based audience and a mainstream audience, uh, but that just ends up making the whole thing feel a little hollow and low stakes. Not trying to be the most priestly man in the world. He's a good man trying to be a great man. Oh, there's that guy from The Big Bang Theory. Why did they give all of the men in this whole video hairstyles as tall as the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> They're all like, yeah, I have time to talk about the show. I really love how it's about God. Wait, that's Gary. And that's not Tracy. What should I do? The Bible says you're supposed to stone adulterers. But of course, you're not going to be doing that in 2017. Baby, what are you doing with that rock? Ah! I've never met anyone at the beginning of a psychotic break before. I always catch the tail end. Huh. <laughs> Rest in peace, living biblically. Next, we have a show called Alex, Inc. This, I read, was supposed to be Zach Braff's sort of comeback vehicle, and it's about podcasting. So, you know, very web 2.0, very millennial, very hip, very now, very of the moment. This was on ABC, and it also came out this year, and it was canceled. Let's take a look and find out why. It's 4 a.m., and I am too excited to sleep. Tomorrow is my first official day as the boss of my new podcast company because I believe there's a place where I can tell the kind of stories I want to tell, where I can work with the kind of people I want to work with, and most of all, where no one, and I mean no one, can tell me what to do. 
Will you please shut up? Oh, sorry, honey. I think I have a fair amount of patience for most things in this world, but maybe it's Zach Braff's voice? This podcast about our lives only works if you ignore the microphone and just act like you'd normally act. Hello, Govna. I'm a British person. Or do that. That girl is hilarious. Give her an Emmy and then cancel the show. Yeah. No, you're used to dad doing a lot more of these things because at his old job he had more flexible hours and made good money and had great benefits and still decided to quit and thrust us into chaos. Come on back, baby. I like this actress. She kind of reminds me of Kourtney Kardashian in a weird way. I'm wondering if the show has a joke to explain this necklace that's hanging around her neck because it's very distracting in this scene. Welcome to the Nerd Factory. It's an incubator, babe. Everyone here has ideas they're developing. Those guys are designing a robot that rocks a baby to sleep. Heads up! Coming along, fellas. <sighs> so it's like a, a startup loft for young people who are starting up. Do you just love how relatable this is? Hashtag me. The guy from The Sopranos is in it, and like everyone else on television, his hair is voluminous as ever. I believe in this company. That's why I'm putting everything I have into it. You don't have anything. Yeah, but it's all in there. Where's the fire extinguisher? Under the sink. Where's the other fire extinguisher? Coat closet next to the broken vacuum. Okay, I'm glad that we're getting a feel for all of the characters. Everybody gets a moment in this in this trailer. Your temperature is 135 degrees. I told you it was a doozy. Shout out to the mixed race family representation for sure, but nothing is jumping out of this at me as particularly unique or interesting or funny or, you know, interesting. And again, I think this show is based off of a real person. Maybe the problem stems from trying to turn real people's lives into sitcoms. That's the best advice I can give is like, think twice before doing that. Next, we have another sort of religious show called Kevin Probably Saves the World. This is also on ABC. I don't remember what the show is about because it's that forgettable. Hey Reese, say hi to your Uncle Kevin. Hey. Hey. Look, I know that he hasn't been in our lives lately, but he needs us. Give him a chance. Think he can just come into our lives? I don't even know you. I'm here now. That took a turn really quick. I thought this was like a coming home from war type of saga, but okay. Do not be afraid. Kevin? Morning, sunshine. Who are you? I'm a messenger from God. You've been chosen to save the world. Oh, that sounds great. I, I love it. Who are you talking to? She can't see me. Put the knife down. You look like a crazy person. I feel Oh, so it's like a touched by an angel type deal or a hearts and souls type deal. There's lots of shows that are kind of like this. Those all had this sort of emotional, moral message with a divine intervention type of feel. How am I supposed to save the world? By putting others before yourself. Helping those in need. I'm not a good person, but I feel like I'm getting a second chance. Kevin probably saves the world. All right, that told me nothing about what he does to save the world or to help people every day. I don't, I don't know if he's like doing random acts of kindness for men with bleached hair at the airport who he later hugs. Is it short hair or long hair, Kevin? How are you gonna save the world if you can't even tell me that? I guess we're just not into that type of television anymore, you know? We're watching Game of Thrones where violence and massacres happen every week. The last show that I wanted to tell you about is called Me, Myself, and I, but I kind of don't even want to because there's something Something else I want to show you. So all I'll tell you about this show is that it's like the Wonder Years a little bit if the Wonder Years was canceled after one season. That's a wrap everybody. Thank you for your hard work on the show. Also let me make a blanket disclaimer that I'm not disparaging any of the work, the writers, the actors, everybody who is involved. I appreciate all of the long hours and thought. Do you feel me global audience? I'm not trying to be mean. That being said, my research for all of this video did involve Googling the phrase worst television moments of 2018. And in that search, I found this happy accident. It is probably my favorite news blooper of the year. And I watch them almost monthly. This happened in June, probably the most prolonged and awkward experience that was ever broadcast on television in all of 2018. I'm gonna break it down for you blow by blow. You know, usually when you're talking about the world of inflation, you guys, you probably notice, is that a good thing or or not a good thing? Inflation. I'm sorry, the question again, Dave? Is is inflation in our world 
a good thing or not a good thing? It depends upon what the topic Generally. is. What are we talking about? Generally, inflation? The broadcast opens with this gentleman asking a question, a very confusing question that nobody quite knows how to answer. Generally, when you hear the word inflation, not economically. Something good come to mind? For yeah. me, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you that you're right about, if you say good, you're right, because this is the world of inflatables. Give yourselves a nice round of applause, everybody. These are just the volunteers coming out here today. Oh, I didn't know where you were going with that for a second, Joe. That was the weirdest way to ask me if I liked inflatable bounce houses. Meanwhile, these volunteers are all standing behind him being like, this is why we're standing here. And then he starts asking these poor people questions. Even those questions don't make any sense. And Addie, are you gonna, what kind of fun do you think you're gonna have today? Um. What kind of fun am I gonna have today? Good fun. Lots of fun. Um, Lots of fun. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good kind. <laughs> um, helping, just okay. helping everybody. <laughs> helping fun. So, Lean, what do you, you think? I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <coughs> oh, she straight up doesn't want any part of this. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. What kind of fun do you think you can find here today? All I kinds. All yeah, kinds of fun. <laughs> she does this. This is a place where kids and families can come and kind of bounce around, but you need something, and I'm going to have everyone do it like a magic chant, because when we're talking inflatables, you need something that's been inflated. Are you guys ready? Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. Abracadabra, one, two, three. Now it's time to see what we see. Now it's time to see what we see. <laughs> Why that magical chant? Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. How's everybody doing? My name is Mr. Wacky. Welcome to the Inflatable Run. We have all kinds of attractions behind us and a course that families can run as many times as they want with inflatables on them. Yeah, this is great, you guys. Now, does that mean that everybody here becomes an inflatable today? Do they want to be inflatables today? <laughs> I'm gonna guess, based on the reactions of this audience previously, they don't want anything from you. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! Oh my god, so awkward. <laughs> and that girl who I love is on her phone, completely checked out, yes, work. And that show, Good Day San Diego, is not canceled. That's still on the air, so you can check them out every morning in San Diego. Ugh, I love a good news blooper. I don't know what it is. Were you guys fans of any of these TV shows that were unfortunately canceled after one season? Let me know in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you want me to cover even more television topics. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload at least two every week. Thank you all for Diving into the worst television shows of 2018. I will see you next time.